going on? Uh, just driving to work on a Saturday and we have a freezing rain warning. So there's literally frozen water falling out of the sky right now. Uh, I don't know how much more close to post, you know, apocalyptic weather could possibly get. But yeah, there's literally ice just forming in clouds and falling out of the goddamn sky right now. It's not snow. It's freezing rain, uh, is what the weatherman said, and that's that's seriously absolutely fucking terrifying to me. But anyway, um, Sean Burnett asked an awesome question: How do I go from being a high 600-pound puller to an 800-pound puller? Uh, and I feel like there's fucking frozen water all over my windshield. Um, I feel like I'm pretty qualified to answer this question because I've been in the I've been in the exact same boat. Um, so the the first <laughs> the first and obvious answer is I did my first competition in 2005, and then I did my first 800 pound deadlift and single ply a couple of years after that. But I did my um, that that. My first meet in 2005, I pulled 644. Uh, from that point, it took me till 2015 to, to pull 804 raw. And I had missed it about 10 times or so in meets up until that point. So, uh, obviously, my, my number one answer is train it for 10 years and it'll get better by accident. Uh, but... I'm, I'm definitely not genetically predisposed for strength or athleticism or anything. It, it just, uh, a lot of times, it just takes time. It just takes a long, long fucking time. Uh, and even before that meet in 2005, I was training, you know, well, I was training squats, benches, deadlifts, cleans, just all the shit I was doing for playing uh, college football. And I started actually deadlifting in 2003. Yeah, 2003. So, um, yeah, I mean, time is huge. So what, what were some training methods in between that 10 year time span that, uh, that really made any kind of difference for me? Um, and that I think would make a difference for just about anybody was I really started, you know, just hammering weaknesses. I had, um, a huge hamstring just deficit from years of playing sports and never training my hamstring. So, um, just doing doing some deadlift variations helped that. I really I really really like dimmel deadlifts, RDLs, just stuff where you get to uh, really really work on hip hinging while just kind of directly working on your hamstrings and everything kind of responsible for hip extension in the first place. Um, so that's that's one thing. Just adding adding that kind of stuff in. Um, just kind of I, I had to I had to go back and revamp my technique a couple of times. Uh, the biggest time was when my deadlift kind of stayed, kind of got stuck at like the low 700s, and that, uh, or probably, probably, it got stuck in like the high 600s, so what I had to do, um, I was doing some dumb technical stuff, I was like really jerking the bar out of the bottom, I was bending my elbows really hard and like snapping them out and wasn't really paying attention to like my, what my lats were doing, I had no like mid-back tightness at all. Uh, and that, that was all stuff that was just totally fucking me up. I wasn't pulling slack out of the bar, stuff like that. So just uh, going back, my deadlift dropped for a little while, obviously, because I was just totally relearning a brand new technique. But that definitely paid dividends later on because, um, you know, my, my deadlift became more consistent as I trained it. So um, definitely taking a step back, looking at your technique, being honest with yourself, and maybe realizing that you might have to drop the weight for a little bit just to work on those, uh, some of those cues I just talked about, and that's pretty common for a lot of people messing up. Uh, the pretty good deadlifters that are messing up and can't get past, you know, can't get over that higher 600 to low 800 deadlift mark. Uh, then uh, really the, the biggest thing that took it, you know, from that, from that point on, that took me to the low 700s. Uh, I kind of stalled there for a little bit, and then um, adding in actual speed work with bands, chains, stuff like that, and doing that speed work with my uh, with a conventional and with a sumo stance. So the better you get, the better you get at pulling stuff off the floor. The better you're going to be at deadlifting. So no matter what the angle is, it's just gonna it's it's always it's always going to carry over. I, I haven't found one ground-based pulling exercise that does not transfer directly 
uh, in one way or another at some time po at some point in time or another to just a regular competition deadlift whatever you do whether it's uh, whether it's like a uh, whether you do sumo or conventional so uh, yeah my my only advice is take a look at your technique um, uh, start start doing the, start training the shit you suck at and then you'll get better um, you know definitely take a look at incorporating some kind of speed work with with a single deadlift in a competition you know it's different than a squat and a bench press you don't have that eccentric phase you don't have that stretch reflex there's no there's no elastic loading going on or anything like that so um, yeah you definitely need to learn how to develop as much force as you possibly can in the shortest possible amount of time um, you know, that's, that's really the only real programming thing. I've always kept deadlift training really, really low, like pretty low volume throughout the week. Uh, so nothing, nothing too groundbreaking there, but, um, yeah, and time, you know, that's, that's the biggest thing. Give it time. Don't do a bunch of dumb shit. Don't hurt yourself. And, um, you know, so that's, that's my, that's my surefire way to put 200 pounds on your deadlift. Train it for 10 fucking years and you'll put 200 pounds on your deadlift. But uh, all right, man, hope that, Hope that gave you some insight. Let me know if uh, let me know if you want me to expand on any of that stuff, like loading stuff for speed pulls and everything. But um, yep, that's that'll that'll get you there.